Okay, so here here we have the, the edger installed. Water lines hooked up, power's hooked up, it's hooked up to the now is this the control station, this Mike? It's called a tracer. A tracer, okay. So so we're gonna go through the whole process here of making a so lens. This is a what's called a bifocal with a line. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll put that up on the machine. This uh -huh. is different settings. This would be like an invisible bifocal. An executive, mm -hmm. which you don't do much, that would you just be a single vision lens, Regular. no multifocal. Mm -hmm. So that shows your bifocal. Uh, this is telling you what the frame is. This would be a plastic frame. This mm -hmm. would be an optil, which is a different type of plastic. This would be like a specialty metal. Mm -hmm. And this is just your traditional metal. We have here for right and left. We can do right only. We can do left only. This would do them both separately. Mm -hmm. The most common is to do that. So both at the same time then? Yeah, and what you do is put it in there. You push okay. start. That'll trace your frame. That'll measure what's called your frame PD. Mm -hmm. And you put the patient's pupil distance in there. Oh, wow, that's neat. And the, and the height that you want the bifocal. That little feeler comes up wow. and traces each lens, and that also gets a measurement from side to side of the frame as well. Very, very cool. Uh huh. Okay, so now that should be done, and then it'll pop up here on the screen. And this is the the pupil distance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you get that from the patient. Yep. And then I'll put that in there. And the 14 would be the height, and that happens to be the height that I need. But if it would be less, I can lower that. That will bring the mm -hmm. line down. As I go up, it brings okay. the line up. You notice when I do the pupil distance that it takes it back and forth. Uh-huh. So okay, now, so that's right where the bifocal is yeah. going to be. So now I want to center the bifocal up between here and here and huh. lined up with that line. Okay. And that should give me the proper distance from side to side. I'm going to put a chuck on here, to, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, now I'm getting a, an idea of how this whole system works together. That's a little st sticky mm -hmm. pad on there. So you notice it's like the oh, water wow. kind of bows a little bit, so you got to get where you want it. Uh huh. That looks pretty good there, so I'll push that, and I'll come over and block up the lens. Mm -hmm. Now I want to switch to the left eye. Okay. We always do the right eye first. You have to put your sticker on a certain way because you don't want it to interfere with any of the other processes. Mm -hmm. Up, we'll bring it over, block that one up. Now we're done with that machine. Okay. Go over to this one. Now, normally you would scan it. You gotta shut this guy off so I don't get copyright infringement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> normally you can scan the tray. Uh huh. Since it was the last one that's up here, I can just push this, and it'll automatically transfer the last job on the tracer. Over Makes here. it easy. So there's that. And if I scan it, it would just do the same thing. Then this tells me if I want the right or left lens. You always do the right one you first. You do the right one first. Mm -hmm. This is the type of material. This is a plastic material. Mm -hmm. It would be a polycarbonate, which is an impact resistant, shatter proof lens, nope. which needs to be mm -hmm. cut in a special process. Now can you do a glass lens on no, this? No, this machine will not do glass lenses. Okay, that, I was going to wonder if glass yeah. is really hard material, yeah. to cut that would yeah. probably and be you, a... you need a special machine. Uh -huh. So this is plastic lenses. Yeah. So it would okay. be plastic or polycarbonate or high index, which is all a mm -hmm. form of plastic. Mm -hmm. This would be just the machine would polish the edge of the lenses automatically. And then this would, of course, no polish. This, of course, is setting the different pressures of the lens. I'm going to chuck this for now. So I, I line that up in there so that everything fits in and the angle is correct. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, 
I'm not going to do nothing with the pressure. I'm going to leave it where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. This is a, to manually change in the edge that I want on the lens. I'm going to do a, a basic height above what's called. Okay, that depends on the frame. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. if for some reason I'd want the lens bigger than it is, I would change this. If I wanted the same size, we leave it there, or we can go to minus, and it would make it a little smaller. But hmm. usually hmm. we start out here. Okay. So those are water. So this thing is, I guess it makes it cutting smoother, right? Yep. So this is the sink that puts water in the sink. This is the wheel, so that would squirt water right on there. I see. Okay. So it's two water sources. It's doing its thing. I did feel the solenoid click there. Did you? At least one of them. actually drains out down here that's all the plastic shavings I guess right goes down yeah. filters it out mm -hmm. <laughs> what we'll do is take the screw out of the frame which I already did okay you just see how the lens fits in there Line the bevel up with the. Mm-hmm. And then what I can do is put this tool and try to pinch it together. Okay. And I don't know if you can see there, but it, it's not quite sm small enough. Huh. You can see there's a little gap. There's a little gap. The okay. Pieces. Right. What does that mean then? It's very little. So then what we'll do is we'll put it back in the machine. Huh. Okay, so you can test fit it. Yeah. Then you might want to. And then I'll push this to tell it that I'm aware and we want to stay on the right lens. And then I'm just going to take a little bit off of it because it was very hmm. little. Like bit a little different. trim. Yeah. This is my start button, but if I'm just going to trim it, then I just want to use that button. Okay. It's still on the machine and it doesn't have to go through yeah, this the whole thing. thing. But it wouldn't let me do this anyway. It would, I can either switch it to the left eye. Ah, uh, so you, it's already done with the right lens. So yeah, we'll do it again. I switch it to the left eye, uh -huh. and then I start back over. Yep. Start. That's neat. Now is that the usual process? If it's a little tight, you just trim it a little yeah. bit, and okay. So it's better to like, go a little really big first. Words. Well, actually, we've had this machine, and it's been very faithful to us. Uh -huh. I don't know. I don't really remember it ever cutting once small, but I'm sure it possibly happened. Uh -huh. But I'm usually I'm usually pretty good going with what the machine says and we may have to take some off. Sometimes it's okay. exact. Right. Uh -oh. Okay, so now I'll get it all lined up in there. And do this again. And that's that's pretty, pretty much perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. You can see right there where it separates. Yep, and the screw just and pinches it yep, together. And the screw and... will pinch it together. Wow. If it's too loose, of course, the lens can fall out. Okay. And if it's too tight, in some situations, it... you can actually damage the lens. Uh-huh. So now, I'm just change it to the left eye, which I have to hit that twice. Once we'll uh -huh. retouch it, twice will take okay, right now to it the left gives... lens. Okay, now yeah. it's ready to... Now we're going to start that whole process over. I'm going to go ahead and leave that down because most of the time it's fine. Okay. Uh, sometimes on the left lens you even have to take it down again. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because it's doing All right, the whole so process and not mm -hmm. touching it. Yep. That's, that's fantastic. I've never seen a, a lens cut before. I didn't even know that the service is available in some of the uh, optical 
shops. I believe we're the only one in state college. Oh, really? So usually the other ones they send them out to a lab or maybe Sears. Uh, most of them have their own, like Walmart has their own labs that do all. Uh huh. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, years ago, the big one-hour service was real important, and uh. then people brought in the labs that actually put the prescription into the lenses as well as cut the lenses to fit the frame. Okay. But that kind of phased off pretty quickly. So I guess this machine is central to the business. You you, you make a lot of custom lenses, yeah. right? We have a, a lot of people like most of these jobs here are waiting for patients to bring their frames in. Uh -huh. And uh, we're the only ones where they can order their lenses and then come in and leave their frame off for a couple of hours and pick them wow. up. Wow. Otherwise, so they have to be sent to the lab. Exactly, and that takes takes time. It's usually a couple of weeks. Most oh, a couple of weeks. Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes you can get the lab to make the lenses, have them ready, then call a patient, they drop off the frame, right. and you send the frame in. But you're still looking at the very best three days. Uh -huh. so now that's a little plate, so if I try to force it in there, I can actually chip the lens. Oh, wow. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a little bit more off of that. Okay, and, and that, you said that's the usual protocol, the yes. left one you now take here I'm taking uh, 0.15 millimeters off. Mm -hmm. that, usually I don't take that much off the second lens, but we'll huh. do that here. For one thing, I'm not worried if I cut the lens too small. Okay, because... <laughs> <laughs> it's just a junk lens. It, oh, okay, so this is just a test run of the, yeah. of the edger. Now I'm go over here after I cut this, I can line this all up. Okay. And uh, I line my lines up equal there. Uh -huh. And as I look around the outside of the lens, I want to make sure it matches the frame, and that all looks pretty good. So that was the original tracing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, okay, I see. You see the lenses that's, there, that's a little really different, neat. so uh -huh. I line that up. Uh -huh. And that's telling me, you know, now if I put it in there and it's showing that way down there, now it's telling me that it's yes. blocking low, yes. mm -hmm. or if it would be vice versa. Mm -hmm. Now it's telling me that I need to change that, and there's a separate process that I can go into and actually calculate. And I can actually move that up, you know, and move that target back or forth mm -hmm. or up or down depending if it's off. But everything seems to be pretty good here, so if it's not broke, we're not going to fix it. That's really neat. See that? Mm hmm. Okay, so, no, so that one is trimmed. Doing this, you also want to make sure you have it in the groove completely, bevel completely, or okay, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, so it won't sit right. Yeah, that's going to be fine there. Yep. So, from, from experience, you say that's a good fit. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Again, we can see that it closed up the gap there. Wow. So now, so everything seemed to work fine. Well, whew. <laughs> there's a test run. <laughs> there's two lenses. Unfortunately, I don't have any other jobs. But okay, yeah, I thought you were saving them up for uh, for a few weeks. Then. Well, what we've been sending them the labs to prevent mm -hmm. a delay. Exactly. We were going to save them up, but then we've been sending them. The yeah, lab. yeah. So but we have these to do. Understandable. To people's frames. Okay, so you have some uh, jobs already in line. And you were saying that before it broke down completely. Once in a while, it would actually kind of miss, miscut the the bevel part. Yeah, it actually only done that a few times. Oh, okay. So it was pretty uh, much the, failed. The wheel way. here that that's basically the wheels going back and forth. That's what you worked on. Yes, yes, that's the stepper motor. And so when I was cutting the lens, that wheel would jump over. Okay. Yep. And because it would, one of the stages. And it would change that bevel, mm -hmm. and it would be on the second cut. So therefore, what happens is it made the lens very small. Oh, and then you and couldn't use it. The lens I had to then you ruin it. it. So that happened once, okay. twice, two or three times. Yeah. Before the machine. And and you said each lens you actually order. In it's not like you have a box of these, uh, you know, generic lenses that you can just grab off the shelf. Well, see the lens is determined by the prescription, so we do have. Oh, okay. Okay. So we do have a stock of lenses here. Mm-hmm. But just the most generic ones, like these are all just single vision. But you see single here vision. is like the Plano is no prescription. There's quarters, fifties, seventy-five, mm -hmm. one, one and a quarter, 
And then these are for stigmatism, so they have two powers in the lens. This oh, is okay. minus two, minus a quarter, and it would go to a quarter, quarter, two, two fifty, two seventy five. Mm -hmm. Then you jump up to your fifties. So here's a plano minus fifty, mm -hmm. minus fifty, minus seventy five. Oh. Then we go over here to the seventy fives, and these are minus minus. If we go all, all the way over here. That's for far sighted people. Then. Yes, and these or these are actually for nearsighted yep. people. And then we go over here, and then we start your pluses, mm -hmm. which minus is more common than plus. Mm -hmm. uh, this would be for somebody that needs reading glasses or right. somebody that's far sighted. But it works the same way. It would go plus one quarter, one fifty, and then you'd have your stigmatism, where it'd be a quarter with a quarter plus a quarter minus a quarter. Stigma cylinders are is the second number, and that's always done hmm. in minus. Well, I shouldn't say that, but again, it goes through, and then it'll go to your 50 cells with the pluses. Mm -hmm. So these are the most common lenses that people need? These are just what's called a single vision, <coughs> where single. they only need one distance. Mm -hmm. If there's some kind of a progressive or a bifocal with a line, mm -hmm. then we have to order that Yours. specifically through a lab. Okay. Especially when you get into your cylinders, where the lens is turning at a different angle, depending mm -hmm. on the patient's needs. Exactly. So everybody's a little different and those lenses have to be made specific for the person that it's okay. that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. I'm sure so that's you a... send in the lab with the pupil distance, the frame measurements, the seg heights, they can put that into their computer mm -hmm. and it'll tell them the best way to cut the lenses so that there's enough room for the frame, you know, mm -hmm. enough room to frame cut out and all that. Yeah. Fantastic. Well I think that this is actually See, like this is a single vision prescription for a patient. So this is the frame he chose. Uh-huh. Oh, so that's a whole package then? Yeah, actually this was one to send to the lab, which now we don't have to send. Although we're trying the most expensive lenses here. So the lens comes to us. It would have, of course, the prescription up here. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see there that it's a plus cell. Over 30 years ago, lenses used to be made in a plus cylinder. Huh. And uh, the minus cell works so much better, but some of the older machines still go by it. So the lens comes to us in a blank like that. So it looks like a really thick lens. In yes, there. this one actually is. Uh -huh. So then for this, we would go to the lensometer. And this particular prescription is a minus 575, minus 250 at two, okay. which you can see here. So I'll set the lensometer to, to two. Mm -hmm. I'll set the power to minus 575. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. So now we have the the axis ank degree set. Mm -hmm. We have the power set. And then I can look in here. And I don't know if you can see in there to see the target or not. So what does that do? Does that center the, mm -hmm. the lens? So if you, oh, I'm if sure you I won't be able to. In there. Well, let's, let's give it a shot here. So see, see something. See there's two straight lines. Yep. And then if I go down here, 575, 675, 775, to 8 and a quarter, then we should have three. I see, I see three. Yeah, I think it's three stripes so, almost. Yep. So now if I go back here and I turn the axis, you'll see yep, how those I see, I see those turn around exactly. go away. Uh -huh. So then once I line it back up, yep, that looks we straight. want that straight, solid line up there. Yeah, yeah, one up and down and three across. Yep. So I'm huh. going to take a look at that myself. Wow. And you can turn that to eight and a quarter and see how it changes if you wanted to. Okay. So I'm going to look at it myself because we want to make mm -hmm. sure that's all centered in there because... If we dot this up wrong, it's going to give us the wrong pupil distance. It's oh. going to give us the axis turn. Or oh, it makes little dots in there. That's neat. Yeah. Uh huh. So now what we'll do, since we're doing this, is we're going to go ahead and trace this frame. That process you're familiar with already. Mm-hmm. And the tray. Now, were those kind of placeholders the lenses that you popped out? 
I'm sorry. Those those ones that you popped out were they just? Oh, they're of... they're called demo lenses. Demo lenses. They're just in the frames out there on okay. display to make the frames look a little better. Mm -hmm. I'll set that to your standard metal frame because this is single vision. We're just going to use the one mark. Yep. Go ahead and trace that. So, so this is fully automated. The, the tracer yes. then. Yep. So how does that even know? Does it just the, get the in the fingers groove and, and squeeze it? I think that's how they figure out where that uh, groove. See, it's riding around the inside groove that the lens. Okay, so that feeler stays in the groove and then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we get a look at this. And see how the lens kind of comes to a point there. Yeah. And that, the feeler, that right. point goes inside the, mm -hmm. the frame here to hold it in. Now, are, are all the frames. The do all the frames have that notch in them? All the frames except for the rimless ones. Okay. See the plastic frames have the same thing. Okay. It's just uh -huh. <clears throat> it's just done in a plastic. I don't know if you can see that as Okay, so it's the same little yeah. bevel in there. And this is a rimless. So these are done a little differently. You may remember me showing you the machine. Oh. So that lens is held in with like a fishing line, and you can see there's like a groove that goes around the lens. Mm hmm. Okay. And so uh, there's a plastic liner up here that you line that with. And you take this handy dandy little. I would have never thought there was a fishing line at the bottom of the lens. That's pretty much what it is. It's standard. That's how, that's how it's done, huh? So these lenses have the opposite. Instead of a ridge, they have a, a groove, right? Exactly. Yep. Okay, so now mm -hmm. we're gonna put this. We got five and a quarter minus one. I'll set that 178. Set my five and a quarter power. Put that in there, and I'm basically doing the same thing we just did a minute ago, except the power is different and the axis is different which almost every pair of glasses, the power and axis is different from the other one. Uh, however, 90 and 180 are probably the most common numbers. Hmm. And it'll be somewhere between 0 and 180. So you, you just manually move that lens around yeah. until you, everything lines up? You may up. notice I hold this off so right. the lens don't scratch. But yeah. mm -hmm. So wow. I'm going to put the three dots in there. See, uh, yep, and the, the red center, in there. Mm -hmm. that's telling me that's the optical center of the lens, and that's what we want in front of the pupil, and that's okay. why we take the pupil measurements. Ah, wow. So this person's pupil distance is 66, uh -huh. so I divide that in half because I'm doing a right lens and a left lens, so the right lens is at 33. Now this particular case, because his prescription is so high, and he has what's called a high index lens where the index of refraction is greater, hmm. we actually have what is called an OC height, which is an optical center height. In other words, because of the size of this frame, his eye is up here. So hmm. what we're going to do is we actually measured to his eye, and we got 27. So I'll move this up to 27, okay. and then when I block this lens up, I'll still line it up there. You can, you see, can the see the dots three in there. dots there, yep. and I line them up there. And that way, <laughs> when that's done, that optical center will be up there as far as that's... the proper distance from left to right. So everything is accounted for? Yes. The frame, the and then actual... Here, this you'll see they're called secure edge. This lens has what's called an anti-reflective coating. Uh huh. So this pad is a little stickier, and it holds those lenses. The anti-reflective coating makes the lenses a little more slippery, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that holds the lenses better. Same process, Whoa. but to be safe, I put a pad on the back just uh, to give it a little extra protection. Okay. These are easier to scratch. Uh, or damage the coating, I guess. I don't know. I, I'm, they're better now than they ever been, but mm -hmm. it's just that at one time they were definitely easier to scratch. Um, yep, so part safe. of it may be a habit that I've just never broke and just want to mm -hmm. rather safe than sorry because with the coating they are a little more expensive. Ones. Absolutely. And how long have you been doing uh, this, like, you know, uh, custom eyeglass <laughs> <laughs> manufacturing? Believe it or not, 1984. Oh, cow. So you're very, very familiar with yeah. all these tools. When I, when I got out of the military, I started it. I started 
actually grinding the prescription into the lens. Huh, uh, that's the way they used to do it then. Yeah, well, they, they still do. Mm -hmm. That would be, your prescription is determined by the front curve and the back curve. Okay. And then what you're doing is you're grinding and getting this 575, 255 and a quarter one. The lens is just a thick plank and you grind curves uh, into the back of it. Now is it plastic or glass lenses that you used to? plastic. I did glass, I did plastic and glass. Uh -huh. In fact, you did a lot more glass then, but mm -hmm. plastic is by far taken over. It's much easier to machine, that's for sure. Yes, glass is uh, harder to machine, it's easier to break. Mm -hmm. uh, after you make it, you have to either heat treat it or chem oh. treat it in a very hot, either heat it and cool it real quick mm -hmm. or heat treat it overnight. And I did not know that. that. That hardens that lens. Okay. Plastic lenses, you don't have to do that. So mm -hmm. plastic lenses are a lot more easier, yeah. a lot easier to do. And that. they're probably safer for people just in general, yeah. you don't get well, shattering. Plastic is your basic lens material. You'll notice here we had the polycarbonate that I showed you mm -hmm. earlier. I can show you this. But a polycarbonate is impact resistant, shatterproof lens. It's not unbreakable, it's shatterproof. Okay. So it's not going to go into a million pieces. Uh, mm -hmm. Any child under the 18 or younger, we will mm -hmm. automatically give them polycarbonate sure. for the impact resistance. It happens to be a thinner, lighter weight lens and it happens to have ultraviolet protection so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you, they, they benefit a couple different ways there normally it is a more expensive lens but we don't charge any more for children hmm. now this one because the lens is thicker i want to manually uh, set where i want that to okay. go i don't want the machine to predict what i'm going to do oh that is a thick lens yes so uh this lens would be very thin in the middle because of the curves it's what gives you the prescription Okay. And it gets thicker as it gets larger. So when people are picking out glasses, the size of the lenses, things like that can have an impact on it as well. I already did mm. that, so I don't know why I did it again. Because right, I'm not used to doing things like this. So now we'll push it. The feelers are going to come out as the lens turns, and it's going to trace the lens at these positions. Oh, okay. And then it's going to show me... <clears throat> what the thickness is and it's going to show me what the machine recommends for the thickness to do so oh, the wow. green lines is the inside of the lens and the outside of the lens uh -huh. and the white line is actually telling me where the bevel is going to be so that's what it recommends you say yes uh, this i'm changing it to percent so i can go to 45 percent uh -huh. and then i can turn this actually back to here and mm -hmm. that's telling me it's 2.3 going to be to the outside of the lens so if I push this and this now I can just change that particular spot so if I go like that now it's 2.1 and as I go back and forth here it tells me what the thickness uh, of the front and back is okay so that's your cross get, section yep So this is just to make it look better and sit better in the frame? Mm -hmm. Basically, it's, it's more cosmetic. Cosmetic, okay. Yeah. Uh, most people that do it nowadays just let the machine do it. Mm -hmm. Smell it cutting, right? Uh, actually, this is the high index material, okay, and it does stink. Oh, <laughs> this is actually the thinnest lens you can get. It's called it's a 1.74 index. Mm -hmm. uh, plastic lens is about 1.52, 1.53. Okay. Polycarbonate and what's called mid index, mid index is 1.54, polycarbonate would be 1.59. 1.54, 1 1.60, 1 1.67, and 1.74 is the finish you can get right now. So this prescription 30 years ago would have been twice as thick on the edges of these. Oh my word. Are. That's as thin as, as they've ever That's been. That's as thin as they've ever been. <laughs> yeah. Now this 
pers person has a combined prescription of minus of over minus eight. So that's a pretty wow. good prescription. Then we check. You can see there's a little bit of a gap there's there between the lines. There, yep. We're gonna try a millimeter because we want to take two cuts and make it too small. Mm -hmm, sure. If you have it to take a little bit too off small, then the lens is going to wow. fall out, scratch, and then we have to replace it for the patient. So, too tight, tight can either can sometimes break the lens, can oh, really? warp the lens. Okay. So, you know, you want it to be right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm amazed how fast it is. You can it. only do that once. You know, you can't. I can grind it down by hand, but it's a lot longer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Says. Okay. And especially when you get a thick lens like this, because you can only do a flat mark, so you end up making mm -hmm. sure you look better. But if you decide later that you want to change anything, you can only take it all the way off. So you would take this part off, too, which would make the lens uglier. Hmm. Uh, in order to get that point, that or you just take it flat and, and then you don't have as much of a point and it won't stay in as well. All right, it right. can be done, but you'd rather not have to do it. Yeah, this is this is very high tech even for 2001. It was made especially. Let Maybe just a tiny, tiny bit there. But not too bad. So you so think that when you see there's just just oh, not just quite barely. together yet, but it's really Need a feeler gauge for that. Yeah. So would you say so it's now still there with no lens? Well, uh huh. It seems pretty. It's probably hard for you to tell when. Right, it right, right. Yeah, that's more. So you would actually take so, more off for that one. Well, what I do here is, like I said, it's not too bad, but. We're not going to take any more off. We're just going to run it through the cycle again. Oh, okay. And that'll probably take a tiny bit off. I see. I see. So through the same, yeah, the same cycle. So it's not changed the settings any. It's just going to do the whole thing again. Uh huh. Uh huh. And it, it, it might just take all the more we need off. It's, it's kind of like running running a screw tap through. Already, you have a tab or a, a thread. We just want to clean it up. Uh, right. Just yeah. You can run it in exactly. and out. And when you do the left lens, and I said that sometimes you have to reset it lower, mm -hmm. just to go through the process, and you set it lower. And then it'll take too much off. Yeah. Because here we're taking one or two cuts or three or so to get it to where we want. Exactly. It. And when we go to the left lens, it's all done at once. Oh, because you're already where you want yeah. where you want to be. Mm -hmm. So that's why. So we'll put that in. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but that actually did take a smidgen off. So that's perfect then. Yeah. So that's that's where the experience comes in. You don't keep dialing down the <laughs> the numbers, right? Set like that machine. Uh huh. That determines how much of the lens sticks out in front of the frame and how much sticks. So out you in the custom back. set that. Yeah. And you want to get a. A little bit out the front because that's less out the back. Okay, the so back is more noticeable. Cosmetically, that's yeah. You don't want to get much more than that out the front either because uh -huh. the more out the front, then it just it more uncosmetically. But uh -huh. you, know, you definitely want some in the front, so but most in the back. So now here, we'll go to the left lens. It's going to come out, fill that lens again, and then give me the option of where I want to cut it. It's not going to cut it automatically over what I set up the last time for the right lens. Okay. Now, if I left the machine do it, it probably would figure that up. Huh. And the, the frame has a curve to it. Okay, so you have to take that into account, too. When the machine traces it, it actually takes that into consideration. Uh -huh. When I manually do it, I have to take that into consideration. Okay, so you're gonna. If it's a metal frame, I can always flatten it <clears throat> or put more of a curve on it if I need to. Oh, the actual frame itself? Yeah. Wow, so everything is. You can tweak pretty much everything. So that's what this tool is. So if I wanted uh, to put okay. more of a curve in it, I'd work it like this. Yeah. <laughs> and if I want to put less of a curve, I just turn yeah, you it go. backwards. Fantastic. So now you can see it has the bevel quite funky. I'm going to go back to the 45%. Mm -hmm. and then I'm going to go to the individual placement. I'll get down here and see what we got. See there, it's 2.0 at that spot. Mm -hmm. 
I, I don't usually like to do any more than 2.0 to the front, but mm -hmm. 2.0 is good. Okay, for so, prescriptions. so that's so big. That is that the same settings you did for the right lens? Well, the right somewhere? lens, it was a thicker lens, so this oh, okay. corner is so, a little thicker. Uh -huh. So I did move that up just a little bit. So it wasn't quite as much to the front. That's my limit there. I don't like to put any more than that. Okay. Anymore. That's saying it's two millimeters back from the front. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. 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 So that's it right there. So you can see how much is sticking out the front. Compared to how much it's sticking up. The yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if but you get any more coming out front, mm -hmm. it starts to get pretty noticeable. But you want to compensate to have less of right. that. You know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was fantastic. I can only imagine how much experience that would take. How many pairs of glasses to get all these little details down and. It does take a while. Where I worked before, I used to cut the lenses for the different stores. So I would do this. This was my job. Oh, okay. Panel. Okay. Mm hmm. And so I line that up. That actually looks pretty close on this lens lined up. So you don't always have to take it twice. I probably could take it twice and not change the setting, and it wouldn't be enough to make it small. Okay, but you say right now it, the feeling is good. good. The gap is good. Yeah. Now what we want to do is just shave off these edges so it's not quite as sharp huh. and put them together and the glasses is done. Okay, now you shave that off manually? Uh, yes, actually the machine used to do that. Uh, you can see this down here, right. but once these blades were changed, uh, it's not consistent on here anymore. Hmm. It'll hit harder in one spot and not uh, in another spot. Okay. So I've, I've just been doing it all myself. That's that's basically it. That's I'm uh, very impressed, <laughs> Mike. Thank, thanks for. Uh, I'm pretty <laughs> impressed that you fixed it. To be honest. Uh, well, <laughs> now that I see what it can do, uh, yeah, I mean that's a very uh, integral part of the you know the whole business, I guess. If you, if you can't make the lenses, then people have to wait, and then it's got to be very accurate because again, if we move the pupil distance to the wrong spot or uh -huh. make the frame lenses higher or lower. It's going to affect how the person yeah. sees. They have to be looking through the optical center of the lens to see the best. Okay, okay. So, yeah, it's not what you, you know, I always thought. They just pop in some lenses and in, into frames, and <laughs> but this yeah, this first, is how it's done. When I first started, I thought they just used different thicknesses of lenses, but it's <laughs> right. the curves that actually determine. The okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the higher the curve, <clears throat> the thicker the lens. Well. It, I learned a lot, uh, so I guess with that we'll wrap it up. And thanks to Advanced Eye Care for giving me the opportunity to work on this fancy machinery. And thanks to Mike for walking us through the process of how lenses are made. So thanks for watching. See you next time, poet. smoother on the edge there. Okay, so this is just manually, yeah, so it's almost like a... we got now, very right sharp on the edge. Uh -huh. In fact, it can cut you. Wow. And it has sharp. cut me on times. So all that's going is just taking that off of there. So it's that fast? Yeah, doesn't take much. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't take that off, the lens can chip easier, different things like that, especially on the ones that have the groove. Okay. Because they have a groove down and that makes both sides weak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here, all we do is just take that off of there. You don't want to sure. do too much because then it's going to be noticeable as you look on the front of the lens. So you're going to have a white area that's coming out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just enough to get that sharpness off of there so that the person wearing them, if they get hit or something, it pop back into their face. It doesn't mm -hmm. want to cut mm -hmm. them or anything like that. So this step doesn't take too much extra time, and it's easy to do that. No, but it was nicer when it, the machine did it. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everything's nice when the machine does it automatically for you. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, great.